Okay. Ms. Olami Toyosi is the head teacher administration of Tender Cradle School Ikeja. She's also a staff facilitator with Absorbent Minds Brontosary, where she facilitates teacher trainings. Ms. Olami Toyosi has a teaching experience of about 14 years, with 12 of those years being in school leadership. She strongly believes in the 21st century classroom and how technology can enhance learning. Of recent, she led and implemented her school's online learning system, providing training and technical support for staff and parents. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. I'd like to share my screen, please. Okay. Not to keep us waiting, I'm going to start off all the same. Please let me know when I can share my screen. If not, I will just go ahead without it. Okay. Thank you so much. It's a great privilege. Can you hear me clearly? Okay, I'm going to share now. Thank you. It's a great privilege to be here. And I do not take this for granted. Like she rightly said, I have been a teacher for about 14 years formally. And informally, it's been longer than that. And I've spent a great deal of that time being in school leadership. Now, I am very passionate about learning. I'm passionate about education. I'm also very passionate about the family as a, fa as a unit because the family tends to affect the children, tends to affect their learning. And so I am always very particular about how we can partner with the family, how we can help the child overcome whatever external factors might affect learning. Now, let's talk about the 21st century learning and how the pandemic has affected it or brought it to the fore. It's interesting that we are 20 years into 21st century and education is yet to catch up with the other industries. It's so unfortunate. As a matter of fact, many of us don't even realize we're already in the 21st century. So we see it as one future somewhere that's coming. And so there was already a divide, teachers who were 21st century compliant, who were doing their best to bring in new skills, new styles into teaching and learning, and those who felt the future is still coming. Oh, these things you are talking about now, it does not um, relate to me. It's not what I want to do now. Unfortunately, the pandemic decided to just speed up everything for us. And so educators all over the world found themselves grappling with online learning, trying to come to terms with how they could get learning to move on. Now, let's talk a little bit about 21st century skills. Now, in 1983, the US Education Department came up with a report titled A Nation at Risk. And that was the title of a book that came out of that report. By the time President Ronald Reagan read this report, he was concerned. And so he raised a commission to look into the skills that children, students needed in the workplace to succeed. And so this commission came up and they came up with these three things. Now, before now, we had the core skills of what we refer to as the common core, which focused more on math and English. However, by the time this commission came up with their report, the NCEE came up with their report, it became obvious that we needed more than just math and English. Can we hear me clearly? Yes, we can, ma. Okay. Very clearly. Breaking a bit here. Okay, so it became obvious that we needed more than math and English in our school system. Because the 19th century, 18th century education system that we brought in was no longer enough to support the skills needed in the workplace. And so at the end of the commission inquiry, it was realized that these three main areas were needed in the workplace. 
And you see, it wasn't just in the U.S. Even in Nigeria, it still happens up to now. We have employers complaining about the quality of graduates because what we are churning out from the school system is not meeting the gap in the workplace. Even in the education system, we see this. Last year, we had to recruit in my school, and we went through a whole lot of candidates before we were able to recruit just two. It was discouraging. And this is a trend that has been on for a while. Why? Because there is a gap starting from the education system, starting from the basics, the foundation. What are the main 21st century skills? We have learning and innovation. We have digital literacy skills, and we have career and life skills. Now, before now, many of us who talked about 21st century skills in terms of teaching and learning, we focused more on learning and innovation. Let's look at what learning and innovation is all about or what each area is about. Learning and innovation has to do with the four C's of 21st century learning. And they are critical thinking and problem solving, going hand in hand. We have communications, the different forms of communication. We have collaboration, and then we have creativity and innovation. It's sad to say that not many classrooms, not many schools had this four in their classrooms. In fact, you had educators who didn't even have any idea about this four. But the truth is, these skills are very important. So when we talk about critical thinking and problem solving, what are we talking about here? Critical thinking has to do with the ability for the child to be able to examine different ways or different views of a particular issue and come up with a solution. That's where the problem solving comes in. And you see, parenting also has to do with this. If your child falls down, for instance, and you rush to take that child, to help that child get up, you are not encouraging problem solving in that child. Cognitive development at Montreal has shown us starts from the womb. That is where it starts from. And so by the time the child comes out, by the time the child begins to crawl, you need to enable problem solving and critical thinking. The child needs to know that when I fall, I get back up. There are times that the child will need your help, agreed. But many times, it's a whole lot about parents, I don't want to go into it, but many times, the 21st century parents practice helicopter parenting. We want to do everything for our children, we want to be there for our children at all times. And what are we doing? We are killing their ability to think critically and problem solve. And so unfortunately, the onus is now on the school system to develop this school, this, this skill in the children. Otherwise, they're going to get into the workplace and they're going to have issues thinking critically, which is an important 21st century skill that people need to possess to survive in the workplace. They are not able, critical thinking needs to examine an issue from different points of skill, look at the different viewpoints, examine various thought processes and be able to resolve a problem, be able to come up with a solution. Because we live in a world that thrives on solutions. People don't want to hear that there is a problem. What they want to hear is there is a problem and I have a solution for you, solution still. So in our school system, we need to train children to come up with solutions. How are we going to do it? It's not by giving them um, what I call the teacher talk. You teach them everything that they need to know. You come up with a topic, you teach everything, what is a noun, and then you tell them what a noun is, you define it, you give them examples, and then you give them classwork. You have not encouraged critical thinking in those children. How about coming up with a noun? That is your lesson for the day, right? Discuss with the children what they are going to be learning that day. Then these things are names of these objects. Do you know that the names of objects, of things, of feelings are referred to as nouns? Now, the children are able to make a connection from the concrete into the abstract world you are taking them to. 
and then you are enabling critical thinking. By the time you are done, you are done teaching, and then you begin to ask them to mention nouns, not just give them a classwork to write out or some exercises to write out and say identify the nouns. In this other person, can you think of a noun that, that is this? Can you think of what is the name of this feeling? Now you have actually created a lesson that fosters critical thinking in your class. I could go on and on talking about it. So let me just move on to communication. Now communication has to talk, has to do with how they relate with different people. The various ways they communicate. It's not just about written skills here. It's not just about speech. They need to be able to write, they need to be able to talk. Yes, they need to be able to communicate in a range of situations using a range of media. Whether they are making videos, whether they are um, creating an animation, or it could be through coding, they should be able to communicate their message, communicate some lessons, come pass their message across clearly. So the message is not ambiguous because the right communication channel has been used. How do they know what to do? Because we would teach it in the class. We would enable them, we'll provide an enabling environment for them to develop the skills. Children need to know that there's no difference between them and the next child. So we are not teaching religion here. We are not teaching ethnicity. ethnicity. We are not teaching tribal, uh, we are not teaching tribal thoughts or anything about tribes. We are simply teaching that we are all global citizens of the world. And so we need to be able to work with each other to achieve common goals, to achieve results. That is what collaboration is all about. I'm going to rush through my slides very quickly because I need to now talk about these forces and the pandemic, how it's been developed and how we can move from there. And I have just a few more minutes to go. So let's talk about creativity and innovation. This is something we're already seeing. I, I'm sure you would agree with me that we're seeing a lot of creativity in the music industry, the entertainment industry, in the fashion industry, but we are not seeing so much in the education industry. I guess it is because education, starting from its history, has not seen itself as the same as the rest of the industries. Education has always seen itself differently. We've always felt like we are somehow different from the rest of them, and we are not a part of the world in quotes. And so we just continue to do the same things we have done again and again and again. Unfortunately, doing the same thing again and again cannot give us a different result. It will only give us the same result. Now, we want children who can go into the workplace. As a matter of fact, there are jobs in the workplace right now that we do not have courses for. We don't have courses for them in our high institutions of learning. And it's sad. And you see, one other thing that makes it a bit painful, recently I was, um, I think sometime last month, I tried to check out some secondary schools online. And then I found out that they didn't have a strong online presence. Now I was shocked. I was very shocked. Only a few had a strong online presence. Majority do not have a strong online presence. They are not showcasing what their children are doing. And then I'm wondering, if children leave primary school, where in many private schools we have a lot of, we have a strong online presence, we have a lot of learning and innovation going on, promoting the forces, promoting 21st century skills. And then they go into secondary schools that seem unaware of the changes in the education space, or they seem unconcerned about the need to work on learning and innovation. Then we are going to have a lot of problems on our hands. And these children going to the university. Some universities are making efforts, but when I read some of the comments that lecturers made during the pandemic, during the lockdown, saying that, oh, it was difficult, it was impossible to promote teaching and learning online, it saddened me. Because many of us take online courses, right? Many people have been homeschooled, and then from the homeschool system, they moved on to have online degrees, to have their degrees via online courses. 
outside Nigeria. And yet, we still have a system where the highest level of our education system is saying that it is impossible. So how are we going to promote creativity and innovation so that our children, our students go into the workforce and they are actually creative in their thinking. They can come up with solutions, they can come up with results. That is why Nigerians will go outside, they go to developed countries and they top everything there. Because we have it in us, that creativity is already inborn. Unfortunately, we don't have a system that enables it here. So when they go outside, that system, that, that enabling environment sparks their creativity and they begin to come up with a lot of inventions that wow the world. Our classrooms need to promote creativity. It needs to promote, when children think through and they come up with a solution, creativity needs to be able to help them to develop, to come up with a solution, to design it and bring it into the innovation space, to make it real. From their thinking, it comes down into reality and it becomes a result that is useful for the rest of the world or for everybody. So, learning and innovation is just one of the main skills that we need in the 21st century or that our children need to survive when they leave school. Learning and innovation is just a part of it. It is the best that we have focused on in the education system, but there is more, and the pandemic has shown us that. Now, let's talk about digital literacy. In the last three months or three months plus, a lot of, of digital literacy has been going on. I'm sure you would agree with me. We have been exposed to information literacy. We have been exposed to media literacy, to information and communication technology. Information literacy has to talk about the various ways that information is passed across, the various forms that information can be disseminated. Media literacy has to do with the various forms that we use to carry out information literacy. The various, I don't want to use the word media again now, the various systems that we deploy to enable the information literacy. And how do we do this? We make use of information and communication technology. Now, some private schools had been making use of this information technology in their school systems before now. But during the pandemic, not just in Nigeria, but globally, educators suddenly woke up and realized that that future we thought was far away is now right here with us, and we need to get on with it. We need to simply jump on board and make it real, make it happen. If not, children are going to be left with a learning gap. And so we had a lot of teachers who suddenly began to develop digital literacy skills that they didn't know they could develop. In a short time, a lot of teaching, training, learning began to take place. And people began to develop new skills, 21st century skills that before now they had not paid attention to. Skills that they felt, ah, uh, uh, it's in the future. You know, there was a day I was fascinated, a training somewhere. And then I asked them, how many of you have ever Googled 21st century education? Nobody. So I told them, pick your phones and check it out. Even though at that time, I was already using a lot of these things, each time I went back to look at um, postulations and things that had to do with 21st century education, I, get a bit, I got a bit scared, like, is the education industry really ready? Are we even thinking in this line? Are we even preparing ourselves, especially in Nigeria? But guess what? The pandemic came by and forced everybody into that mode. So the future that we thought was far away suddenly became ours, suddenly came close to us. And you see our children, I need to begin to round off now. Our children began to develop these skills. Let me talk about the third one very quickly, and then I will take us through how learning and innovation has changed. Thank you, educators. I'm rounding off soon. Now, we talk about career and life skills. This has to do with flexibility and adaptability, initiative and self-direction, social and cross-cultural interaction, productivity and accountability. These are skills that a lot of uh, Generation Z and then Generation Y struggle with. Many of them get into the workplace and is, there's just a lot of complaints from their employers and all that right now. 
Okay, please send me a chat. So there's just a lot of complaint that, oh, these children are not fitting in. They are not able to do this. This young person is a pain in the neck and all that. But you see, it started from our education system and what we have taught them. During this pandemic, as a mother and as a teacher, I have seen a lot of these skills suddenly come to the fore. Because through the use of a lot of communication, information and communication technology, children have begun to take initiative. At the beginning, I created a structure for my children. I created folders for each of them. And then in each folder, we have different folders for different weeks of learning. So it's easy to track their learning. We save everything they have been sent by their teachers, and then they are tasked to have saved them. Now, I provided a structure. I, I did it with them. And what was the next thing I began to see? Within a week or two, my children learned to create these folders themselves for each lesson for each week. They began to take initiative and they were self-directed. They would wake up, take the laptop, take the MyFi, put them on and begin to download their lessons into folders they create. They have begun to create lesson plans on their own. What happened here? From the learning and innovation skills, life skills were being developed. They have been flexible. They have come to adapt that, okay, the learning task for each day must be completed. So what happens? If we are not able to complete it, okay, we're out of power, the laptop is out of power. The next time power comes on, before they think of any other thing, the moment power comes on, the next thing is that's a... And you see, it is not just for children in private schools. The truth is those in public schools who were able to get radios, who were able to join TV sessions, joined in. They began to develop these skills. Unfortunately, yes, I know there's a gap because some children did not join because their parents felt learning was impossible for their age. I heard a facilitator say once that learning couldn't take place for children below GSS3 online. I disagreed, of course, because I work in a nursery and primary school and I see learning taking place daily through our system. So as a matter of fact, Learning and innovation has to directly reflect on the life skill. But how? Because our teachers need to develop. You can't give what you don't have. So as our teachers begin to develop these skills, they are able to give it to the children that they teach. So going forward, as the pandemic comes to an end, the pandemic might be over, but the skills we have acquired, the skills we have learned, do not go away with it. They will not die. The beautiful thing about all this is that the more you use a skill, the better it becomes, the more refined. Do we understand this? So as much as possible, while the lockdown may be over, while schools may be resuming, we should not think that, okay, we are now going back to our normal. No, there's nothing like our normal. What the pandemic has done, yes, there have been negative sides to it, but what the pandemic has done for us in the education system is to wake us up from our slumber. It is to make us realize that we need to develop a lot of skills. We need to deploy these skills. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. So what are our next steps? We need to collaborate. Going forward, there's nothing like, oh, um, their school, my school. We need to build a community of learners. We need to share. We need to have, during this period, one of the things that really helped me was having a community of school leaders to talk through, to speak with, to have as my sounding board. We just folks ideas. We talk to each other. We gain, okay, what are you doing? What This is what I am doing. How can we get better? Okay. Collaboration has to come in for all the school communities, as school leaders. Collaboration amongst ourselves, collaboration with our parents. Our parents also need to understand that we are partners in progress. The school system is not the enemy. Your child's teacher is not the enemy. Your child's school is not the enemy. As a matter of fact, you're all on the same side because your focus is to produce a child who is a global citizen and is useful for the entire world, a child who will become a change agent. And so as parents, you need to come together. You need to see your school your child's school as your partner and work with them. So collaboration has to take place on all fronts. And then experiences. Children need to own their learning. That's something the pandemic started for us. 
we need to continue it. We need to understand that children are not blank slate care, that teachers are coming to point their wealth of knowledge. No, teachers need to learn from their students and they need to provide a, a platform for the children to own their own learning. So there should be shared experiences and then flexibility and innovation. Does your timetable give room for this? Does it give room for creativity? Does it give room for each learner's peculiar needs to be attended to? That is why we have lesson plans. If our lesson plans take into consideration the need for every learner, then there will be flexibility and then true learning can take place. And of course, we cannot stop the deployment of technology. We have started it. We should not think that we need to stop it once this is all over. Instead, we should begin to think of how to strengthen it, how to make it better, how to make learning richer via technology. Blended learning needs to come to the forefront. So as much as possible, these are the next steps we need to take. We need to collaborate more. We need to have shared experiences with our learners. We need to be flexible. We need to create a system that works. Not that is how we have always done it. That is how our teachers did it. That is how we're taught world without end. We shall continue like that. No, if not, we are going to have our learners leave us behind. And then there's going to be a disconnect, a permanent disconnect, which we do not want to happen. And how do we make this happen? We need to bring in technology. There are different ways we can bring in technology depending on the level of the school, but it is possible. We have seen on social media teachers who had absolutely little or, or, or no technology or no resources, yet they brought in technology at their own level, using their own mobile phones. You, I'm sure some of us must have seen the picture of an ICT teacher in a remote area who drew a screen, a computer screen, with details on the board for his students to learn. Now, what that guy did was such that when any of those children encountered a computer system later and opened Microsoft Word, they would know where to find different things because a picture had been created in their mind by a, a teacher who went the extra mile. So whether we are parents, whether we are educators, we need to help our children learn and deploy these 21st century skills because we are in the 21st century. Century. 20 years have gone already. Yes, this is 2020. 20 years into the 20th century. The entertainment industry has left us behind. The fashion industry has left us behind. Yet, education is the mother of all industries. We need to collaborate. We need to do better. And we can do better. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, everyone. So that'll be all for now. If we have questions, I'll take our questions as we